animation we want to talk about the structure of kidney kidney is normally can be divided into three different structure renal cortex renal medulla and renal pelvis and then finally there is a ureter that is attaching the kidney to finally to the urinary bladder and ureter carries the urine and urine stored in urinary bladder and then it will be released so let us look at each of the structures in details let's first talk about the renal cortex renal cortex is the outer granular appearing region of the kidney all nephrons originate in the cortex the second part is renal medulla which is an inner region sits which is striated appearing triangles called renal pyramids this region appears striated because uh, those collecting dirt ducts from uh, those nephrons are running through this region and finally take entry into the renal pelvis which is the third structural area which is a central cavity where urine formed in the renal cortex and medulla collects finally the ureter it's a smooth muscle walled duct that carries the urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder kidneys are bean shaped organs that filter blood to regulate the level of waste water and salt in the body fluids the nephron is the functional unit of the kidneys it modifies the composition of blood and get rid of all those body wastes and toxins produced by urine blood composition is altered by three primary mechanisms filtration tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion we'll examine each of these mechanisms in the context of the structures of the nephron here in this animation we will show you the three essential stages to make urine by the nephron you will see nephron structure also helps this process to achieve the first process is the filtration the second process is the reabsorption or known as the tubular reabsorption and the third process is known as the tubular secretion so let's see each of these processes as an overview urine formation begins with glomerular filtration let the dots represent plasma constituents normally about 20% of the plasma that enters glomerulus is filtered and the other 80% leaves through the efferent arteriole Tubular reabsorption occurs as the filtrate flows through the tubules and substances of value to the body are returned to the particular capillaries. On average, over 99% of the filtered plasma is reabsorbed and conserved for the body. The remaining 1% contains unwanted substances and is eliminated in the form of urine. The third process, tubular secretion, refers to the selective transfer of a few substances from the peritubular capillaries into the tubular lumen tubular secretions provide a mechanism for extracting an additional quantity of substance from the plasma and adding it to that which already present in the tubule anything which is filtered or secreted and not reabsorbed remain in the tubule to be excreted as urine Filtration is the transport of materials and dissolved substances from the blood to the glomerular capillaries into the Bowman's capsule. Now not all the components of the blood will cross the capillary wall of the glomerulus. Blood cells and plasma proteins are too large to pass through the glomerular capillary wall. Items that will cross the capillary wall of Bowman's capsule are water, salt, hydrogen ions, vitamins, bicarbonate, urea, glucose amino acids drugs and toxins the kidney retains important nutrients in the blood while ridding of body's wastes and toxins the permeability of the glomerular selects these molecules of inclusion into the filtrate on the basis of their size and on their potential value many of the important nutrient molecules that enter the filtrate must be actively pumped out of the nephron and back into the blood this is the process known as tubular reabsorption although tubular reabsorption occurs along the entire length of the nephron the bulk of this process take place in the proximal tubule many of the important materials have been reabsorbed into the blood from the filtrate in the proximal tubule this modified filtrate must make its own way down to the loop of henle where the further modifications will occur 
The loop of Henle promotes the reuptake of water and salt from the filtrate. The descending portion of the loop of Henle is highly permeable to water but not to salts or any other materials. So there is an osmotic concentration gradient of salts and urea in the interstitial fluid that surrounds the loop. As the filtrate passes into the salty renal medulla, water will leave the loop by osmosis. This results in the concentrated filtrate that is high in salt and urea but reduced in water content. As the concentrated filtrate reaches the thin ascending portion, the thick ascending portion of the loop, the Henle becomes impermeable to water and permeable to salt. Due to the loss of water into the descending loop, salt is now very concentrated in the filtrate. While moving up the ascending loop, the salt begins to move down its concentration gradient and diffuses into the surrounding fluid of the renal medulla. This part of the tubule is relatively impermeable to water so that the filtrate becomes more dilute. As the filtrate makes its way up the thick ascending portion of the loop of Henle, the tubule remains impermeable to water. Much of the salt in the filtrate has already diffused out. So additional salt continues to leave the filtrate, thereby only by activating transport from the cell wall of the loop. Now the distal tubule is the site of active tubular secretion of the materials from the blood into the filtrate. Although the tubular secretion occurs throughout the pathway of the filtrate, it is a specially active part of the neuron. Salt continues to pump out actively. From the distal tubule, the movement of salt creates the osmotic gradient that, that causes water to flow out and leave the tubule by osmosis. Materials in the capillaries surrounding the nephron are actively pumped into the tubule and become part of the filtrate. When the filtrate reaches the collecting duct, most of the salt and water has already been removed. As it moves down the duct, the filtrate either becomes a concentrated urine by the removal of water or remains a dilute urine. This process is under control of ADH hormone known as antidiuretic hormone. On a cool dry day, you are probably hydrated. Your blood solute concentration decreases, your kidneys will decrease water reabsorption to help concentrate the blood in an attempt to maintain the homeostasis. Your pituitary gland will release less ADH causing the wall of the collecting duct to become less permeable to water. As a result, the body reads itself water in an attempt to concentrate the blood. The urine that leaves the collecting duct is very dilute. On the other hand, on a hot dry day, when you are not properly hydrated, your body's solute concentration increases. Your kidneys will increase water reabsorption to help dilute the blood in an attempt to maintain the homeostasis. Your pituitary gland will release more antidiuretic hormone which makes the wall of the collecting duct more permeable to water. As a result, body retains more water in the blood. The urine that leaves the collecting duct is very concentrated in those situations.